I got one. Got two. Okay, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the February 22nd meeting of the St. Mary's County Planning Commission. Excuse me. Our meeting this evening is being recorded for the public record. Uh, any comments made by anyone present or, or um, in video must be recorded as part of the record. Therefore, if you have anything to say, you must come up to one of the microphones provided or when giving testimony online or on the telephone, you need to give us your name followed by your statement. Your comments cannot be recorded and placed in the record unless they are done in this fashion. You are to direct your statements, questions, or or responses to the board only, and we'll, we will direct them to the appropriate person for an answer. Um, please keep your comments to five minutes or less. Anyone testifying or asking questions during our public hearings will be required to take an oath, and uh, I'll thank you for your cooperation. Uh, on our agenda this evening, uh, after our uh, we go over the minutes uh, from the uh, February 8th hearing, um, our first public hearing this evening will be uh, the Breton Bay Brewery uh, number 20-132-011, followed by the public hearing for Wentworth Welding and Fabrication Concept Site Plan number 20-132-009, um, followed by any new business in adjournment. Um, I'll introduce the board members, starting on my left, please. Patty Brubrecht. Howard Thompson. Joe Van Kirk. Merle Evans. Okay, also with us this evening is uh, William R. Hall, is a, a board member, um, Kim Summers, Joe Fazekas, and, our, and Mr. Joe St. Clair Alton is also with us this evening. Uh, from Land Use and Growth Management, we have the director, Mr. Bill Hunt. Uh, we have our two planners, Brandy Glenn and Courtney Jenkins, and our administrative coordinator is Kathy Garcia. Um, our video media producer is Amy Carter, and from the county attorney's office, uh, we have uh, the county attorney, David Weiskopf, and his deputy county attorney, Neil Murphy. Uh, from the Department of Public Works, uh, we have Donnie Mills, yeah. and um, I think that's it for the county departments that are here this evening. Okay, uh, did everyone have a chance to review the February 8th minutes? Is there any corrections, yeah. deletions? Okay, I'll accept a motion to uh, approve them. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting that was conducted February 8th, 2021. Okay, motion. I have a motion, do I have a second? I have a second by Mr. Evans. Okay, I'll go down and roll call for approval. Uh, Merle Evans? Yay. Joe Van Kirk? Yes. Patty Robrek? Yes. Kim Summers? Yes. Okay. William R. Hall? <coughs> yes. Okay. Joe Fazekas? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'll also vote for approval on those. Okay. Okay. Um, our first case this evening, um, we'll open that up. Uh, Anybody that's going to be testifying for that this evening, this time, if you would raise your right hand, I'll get you sworn in. I think that's just you, Mr. Hunt. Okay. Uh, do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you will give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. I will open it up to staff, or would you like to just let... Uh, Mr. Hunt. I think that's a good idea. Mr. Hunt, um, did your applicant, um, did the applicant want to start out with a statement? Did they have anything they wanted to do tonight? Um, well, we have an issue that we didn't think was going to be an issue that has turned into a real issue. So we would like to ask for a continuance, please. Okay. Okay. Is there any questions from the board? Then I'll accept a motion to continue. What date would we have for that? May 17th. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept a 
continuance? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, may, I would move to uh, continue the concept plan uh, for the Bretton Bay Brewery. What was the date, May? May 17th. May 17th until May 17th. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. I have a second for Ms. Rodebrecht. Okay, all in favor of that motion, um, we'll just go down the list in here again. Merle Evans? Yes. Joe Van Kirk? Yes. Patty Robrecht? Yes. Kim Summers? Yes. William Hall? Yay. Joe Fazekas? Yay. And I also vote for that. Okay, Mr. Hunt, we'll see you in a couple months, if not before. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Moving right along. <clears throat> okay. Papers, get this paper. Okay, our first case, or our only case this evening, is a concept site plan number 20 132 0009 for the Wentworth welding and fabrication. Uh, the owner is Howard Wentworth. Um, and the action requested is a review of a concept site plan for a 7,040 square foot welding and fabrication facility. Uh, let's see who we'll have speaking tonight. We will have Mr. Weigel, I presume. And um, Mr. Hunt, are you in this too? Yes, uh, I guess you are, that's right. LSR and Mr. Wentworth are all here. Okay, everybody that would be testifying this evening, if you'll stand now and I'll get you sworn in. Raise those right hands and now, gentlemen. There you go. I know you don't have to, Mr. Weil. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you all. Okay, Brandy, you leading us off? Yes. Okay. Agenda item one is concept site plan 20-132-00009 welding and fabrication. The concept site plan seeks approval for a 7,040 square foot welding and fabrication facility. The site is located at 25635 Loville Road. The land use is rural preservation. The zoning is rural preservation district. Use type 83 production industry custom includes on-site production of goods by hand manufacturing involving the use of hand tools and small scale equipment. The classification includes custom carpentry, cabinet and small scale furniture making and woodworking, blacksmiths, welding, machine shops, sail lofts, small scale sawmills for custom work. The rural preservation districts are intended to foster agricultural, forestry, mineral resource extraction, and aquaculture uses and protect the land base necessary to support these activities. Low density residential development in, the ty in this type of district is permitted subject to performance standards that maintain the rural character of the district in recognition that the fact that a full range of public facilities is not provided or planned. The general intent of the district is to encourage farming without undue burden on the landowner. The public notice for the Planning Commission public hearing was published in the Enterprise on February 5th, 2021 and February 12th, 2021. The property has been posted in accordance with CCO requirements, section 21.3.3. .3. Certified mail receipts have been received and have been entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 1. The agenda was posted on the website on February 16th, 2021. The concept site plan was reviewed at the TEC meeting held on April 22, 2020. Production industry custom is a permitted use in the RPD. Site plan approval is required. For all non-residential and multifamily residential projects that require major site plan approval, a concept site plan shall first be approved by the Planning Commission prior before the major site plan may be processed for approval by the Planning Director. 
This is a public hearing which enables all who wish to provide information to the Planning Commission. In order, order to approve the concept site plan, the Planning Commission shall make the findings that the proposed development is consistent, consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable functional plans, may be served by adequate public facilities as required by section 70.2.2, will promote the health, safety, and welfare of the general public, adequately developed recreational and other community amenities are provided in accordance with the comprehensive plan and the comprehensive zoning ordinance, is consistent with chapter 62 design objectives. There are two, two outstanding issues. If approved as drawn, a variance to reduce the required 65 foot type B buffer yard to a 20 foot type C buffer yard in the rear of the existing structure proposed for the welding and fabrication use will be required. The forest conservation easement amendment process must be completed before the major site plan can be approved. This concludes the staff report and is entered into the record of this public hearing as exhibit two. Representing the applicant is Dave Weigel from the Dugan McKissick and Longmore Law Firm and Wayne Hunt with Little Silence's Rest. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, does any board members have any questions of staff at this time? Okay, hearing none, um, I'll go ahead. Uh, Mr. Weigel, are you going to open? Uh, who's going to open for the applicant or the applicant himself? I, I, I'm going to speak very uh, briefly. Um, Mr. Chairman, and then uh, Mr. Hunt's going to make a brief presentation, and then I will, uh, at the conclusion of Mr. Hunt's presentation, um, discuss uh, the outstanding issues identified in the staff report um, and any other uh, topics uh, that the board or the commission would like to have addressed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, to begin with, um, I was noticing the board docs um, online. I saw tons of information there. And as I was starting to prepare a PowerPoint, I, I couldn't for the life of me come up with anything that should be in a PowerPoint that wasn't part of the documents that were presented. And as this uh, presentation is going through, I realized that not all of that was made part of the presentation. So I apologize for that mistake. But what I will do here is I've got a copy of the concept site plan shown that we can talk about. Um, if you have any questions, I can illustrate answers as necessary. The things I do want to point out first off is that the use is allowable. Um, the building currently meets the 20 yard, 20 foot setback requirement. What did Mr. Hunt say? Although currently, the property requirement. Wait a minute, Mr. Hunt. Um, anticipate, Mr. Hunt, could you repeat? I'm sorry. What, could you repeat what you last said? It came to a little 20 bit. Foot, okay. He said he currently does something. It currently meets the required building setback or yard setback of 20 feet. I was trying to uh, pull that up on a slide that was going to be easier to see or a sheet that was going to be easier to see. The 20 foot building restriction line right there, you see it does meet that requirement currently. Um, anticipated traffic flows are below the threshold for a traffic study or the requirement of a traffic study and the roads will operate at acceptable levels. It's at a level of service. Um, this plan has been approved by all required agencies without major comments, except for the two that have been pointed out as outstanding issues, which are buffer yards and forest conservation. Um, if there are any questions about the plan itself, I'd be happy to answer them. But when it comes to the buffer yard and forest conservation issues, I'd like Mr. Weigel to answer those questions. I'm sorry for the brief presentation, but uh, I'm now open for questions. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Hunt at this time? I think I'd like to hear the entire yeah. process before okay. I ask any questions, since it was so brief. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Weigel. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Hunt, for, for that presentation. Um, 
With regards to the outstanding issues here, um, the first one identified is the, the buffer variance and that it be reduced from a 65 foot type B buffer to a 20 foot type C uh, buffer. I think candidly, this is a an issue that we will take to the Board of Appeals and, and they will consider the variance request um, and certainly will address any and all of the variance criteria uh, at the Board of Appeals. I, I would note uh, that the affected property owner uh, the, the, that is closest to the area where the buffer yard will need to be reduced, uh, that's Mr. Ridgell, I believe, has, has not uh, raised an objection uh, on the record. Um, so, uh, he obviously, if he doesn't have an objection, we, we think we would be successful in front of the Board of Appeals. I, I would also note that I, I found a, a case from, from May of 2020 where the, the board uh, approved a, a similar reduction um, for a high intensity use that was a motor vehicle maintenance service area. And, and what we're proposing here is a, classified as a low intensity use. So, um, we certainly think we, we will be successful in front of the Board of Appeals. But uh, as I said, that. Uh, is an issue for for the board of appeals um uh, and we will address it uh in greater detail in front of the board of appeals did, um, did you say with the, regards to the park did you say the motor vehicle um um the uh high give, give, tell me what you said about that again real quick the one that you're using oh, as, as a comparison certainly sure that that was case that was case v as in victor a a p as in paul number one five one three two zero one five um and the proposed use there was a, a motor vehicle maintenance service major which is categorized as a high intensity use and what the property owners there were seeking was a reduction from a 65 foot b yard buffer to a 30 foot c yard buffer um obviously we're seeking a reduction to 20 um but we also have a lower intensity use um that, so that, obviously we have to go in front of the board that came before the board of appeals though did it not because that was yes sir that yes was, sir that was a variance yeah Right, and that's what I'm saying is we too will be be seeing the variance and um, with, with the Board of Appeals, and that's within the Board of Appeals uh, jurisdiction, and um, that that is an issue we will take before the the Board of Appeals uh, if this site concept plan is approved. Okay. Just one minute, Mr. Weigel. This is David Weisskopf, County Attorney. I just want to interrupt you for one second and make sure that the board is aware that while you say whether or not a variance gets approved is ultimately for the Board of Appeals to decide, but whether or not, you know, setbacks are certainly something that the Planning Commission can look at. In fact, that's one of the um, one of the topics that they will look at when deciding whether or not to grant this, or I'm sorry, to approve this concept site plan. Would you agree with that? Yes, I, I yep. would agree with it. And I believe, okay. I believe Mr. Hunt addressed that in his presentation. The setback? I believe he talked that it was within the, 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 the setback. 20, the 20 foot setback, correct. Okay. Correct. Um, and then with regards uh, to the forest conservation easement amendment, um, you know, certainly that is is a process we will go through again, uh, just like with seeking the variance from, from the Board of Appeals. Um, so we're cognizant of the work that remains to be done um, under this site concept plan and, and fully intend to move forward with that expeditiously. Well, I would think you'd have to go expeditiously because all this is being done after the fact. So with that being said, has anybody got questions or want me to, I've got, I've got plenty. But Mr. Hunt, I wanted to ask you a qu quick question if I could. Could you um, describe to me production industry, what, what that might entail? Or Brandy, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to diss you. <laughs> Well, 
I think Brandy should answer that. She had it as part of her presentation where she listed the allowable uses for number 85, the well, production industry limit, I think. I'll ask, I'll ask either one can answer the question for me. He thinks he was talking about Wayne Hunt, not no. Bill Hunt. All right, so bear with me him. while I plop the ordinance, okay? I'm sorry, Mr. Hunt, if I, if I messed you up there. I was I'll was i say, I'll have to say Bill Hunt or Wayne <laughs> Hunt tonight since I got two Mr. Hunts. I'm oh, sorry. thank you. I'm yeah, you messed me up there. I wasn't dissing you. <laughs> I wasn't dissing you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. I'd rather not be on the spot like that. There, okay. Thank you, Ms. Van Kirk. <laughs> Brandy. I am. I, I am. <laughs> no, I'm <Uncle> just, <laughs> just getting this straight here. <laughs> I was just going to read from the staff report, but I'd rather bring the ordinance up. If you have a second. And while she's doing that, I'm sorry if I misspoke and just, you know, said setbacks earlier. I also meant what I was referring to was the buffer. The buffer is certainly something that the Planning Commission can look at. And, that, and that's all I meant by that. Is that what Miss? It, I didn't want you to get the impression from what Mr. Weigel was saying is that you can't even look at the buffer. Oh, no, that that's something. That's part of what we. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you want me to read what the ordinance says? Please. Okay. I mean, unless you want to explain it in your own words, you 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 do whichever one. Well, production industry custom. Um, you could have a, a small scale welding shop. Um, a tool shop, mm. well, furniture making. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, I think right down the road there's like a, a small furniture shop. Um, it's two of. This says sale lofts, but I'm not sure what that is. A blacksmith shop. Okay. Um. Well, I'm just and a to, small a small um, sawmill. But when you say small, I mean small uh, scale. Small scale. I mean, does so, it? So that's that's <laughs> right. Interpretation. Um, I, I understand. He, I mean, somebody could come somewhere in a, in the industrial setting and put up a fifteen thousand square foot welding shop, and that would kind of make his look small at that point. I'm just, you know. Put it doesn't. It doesn't like when you say small. It doesn't say up to so many square feet or something like that. Well, let me let me go to these standards real quick and double check that. It also refers to limited. Hmm. I've got that information. If you want me to read it, Brent. The standards. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Or the description for it. Right. He, he broke up. I didn't hear what he said. If you have the standards right in front of you. Yeah, go ahead, Wayne, if you want to. Yeah, I've got the description right in front of me. On-site production of goods by hand manufacturing involving the use of hand tools and small-scale equipment. This classif classification includes custom carpentry, cabinet and small-scale furniture making and woodworking, blacksmiths, welded, machine shops, sail lofts, Small scale, small sawmills for custom work. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go, I'm just going to double check the standards real quick. Okay. To, to make sure we don't have a, um, a square footage limit. there 
known. Because this is a permitted use, it's not a limited standard. So, okay. other than site plan approval. Um, since we were talking about a buffer a little while ago, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and start out with that. Um, we had a couple that I know that Mr. Ridgel is, uh, I'll say, on the one side of the building, but um, we have a couple other landowners that uh, use that, utilize that right of way that goes along the back and are, and are adjacent to that property also. I don't know that they both got notified, but uh, that we, we did get letters from them. And um, part of their questions uh, were being were that uh, they said when they talked to Mr. Wentworth and he was going to um, look into reducing the size of his buffer along the back of the building, that he was going to be doing some plantings and things, and that they hadn't done that, and that there was lighting along the back of the building that um, if you were to drive at night, uh, either in or out of the driveway, it was, uh, um, uh, um, I won't say a hazard, but a uh, um, um, somewhat of a hazard, uh, the blinding of the light that, that got them back there. Um, was he planning, what kind of plannings was he going to do back there? Because I know along the back of that building, um, I'm not sure if it's on the back. I got my pictures here. Um, building where? I know along the back of the building, he's got his gas tanks and things like that, so he's gonna to have to have enough area for um, gas company to get around. I can't exactly tell if he has any um, millings. I know um, said that they were gonna use gravel and sand as, as a driveway, but he's using millings that go around there, and I don't know if he's gonna take those around the back of the building or not. So I'm just seeing exactly um, how, is he, how is he proposing to do that buffer? If, if in fact it, it, it comes comes to fruition. Well, are you referring to the the? I think he would with the with the Type C buffer. Um, there are uh, planning uh, standards within the the zoning ordinance. I'm looking at Schedule uh, 63.3.A. Um, Certainly, he would do the planning in accordance with the requirements of, of a Type C buffer yard. Well, I guess you're going to hear a lot of this out of me tonight. The problem being, he's built, he's in business, and he's got it going on, and there hasn't been anything done um, as far as, as that. Now, I know this might not be quite the type of year, type, time of year to plant those, but I do know they do do plantings along that uh at any time of the year, uh, but but nothing seems to have been started to, um, I'll say, to help anything, any sight lines for the neighbors that might um, come through there. It doesn't necessarily have to be Mr. Original because he's his house, his house faces out toward the road, but these other two have to drive along the side in the back. So um, none none of that part of this project has been done, and um, that that's that's one of my I say concerns, one of the first concerns is that nothing's been done to uh, protect those two people in the back. Um, as far as you're talking about changing the um, buffers around, I noticed that the extra drain field that has to be put in um, is in part of the buff, the 65 foot buffer. If you weren't um, able to get a variance for that 20 foot buffer, um, one, what, do you, what are you going to do? Do you have 65 foot back there in order to, let's just say, you, you don't get the variance? I mean, it's not, um, we're not a rubber stamp industry or anything here. Uh, and we're talking about after the fact. I mean, when you're after the fact, there's not really any, any direction anyone, anybody can go. Um, we don't want to put anybody out of business, but there, there's um, rules that need to be adhered to. Um, I don't know uh, where Mr. Wentworth got his um, uh, information or instructions or however he wanted to do that, but there could be a problem with that if that variance uh, does not come through. Um, what, what would he do with that? Would he move it up further up? 
Um, would he utilize? I don't know if anybody lives in the house. Would he be using that drain field versus the other one that uh, that might not be able to be put in there because of a lack of a variance? So, um, do you have any comment on that? If I may, um, if you can show my screen again. I've got a uh, concept site plan that shows a little bit more clearly what's going on as far as the septic system. You You'll notice at the bottom of the site, the 65-foot B buffer is being shown, and there is a separate septic disposal system for the building itself, which will yeah. not encroach into that, the buffer. That's the one I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So you can see we're not encroaching into the 65-foot buffer with the septic system or the replacement systems, either of them. So that was one of your concerns. Well, that um, on my, on my plan, it's showing that it does. Uh, it, it's highlighted in a in a um, in an area. Uh, it shows the the line that comes through. It has the replacement system above it, but that system comes down and hits that sixty that sixty five foot buffer line. Um, and um, then right below that's the initial system that they have there. So it, it is touching right there. And that's... Um, it is touching, yes, you're right. Yeah. It, it's right up against it. But we've shown a limits of disturbance that doesn't go into it, which means they're gonna be required to build it in the area given. Okay, so you're saying that you're going to be safe from that 65-foot buffer, if, if in fact, because I'm as of right now, I mean, I'm not saying you have a variance because you don't. I mean, you've built something, and you haven't tried to get the variance first. So I'm I'm looking at what you, what we have as a fact here tonight. That's the way I'm looking at it personally. I mean, I don't I'm not speaking for any of the board members right now, but with with the way the project went, instead of going one two three four, it went four three two one. So that that's the way we're that's the way I'm working tonight. I'm trying to work my way backwards out of this to figure out what, exactly what's going on. Um, I understand your concerns. What we've tried to do with this plan was operate as best we can within the requirements. So any place that's already cleared, it's over, it's done with, there's nothing we can do about it. Any proposed clearing will respect that buffer yard. We're gonna stay away from it. Okay. All right, I'm going to switch a gear up on you. Now, when the applicant, and I'll ask staff because I need their input on, when the applicant came before you all, what exactly did he ask for on that, on that site? Originally? Originally, yeah. Um, a, re a garage. A what did you all give him a permit for? I'll, I'll put it that garage. way. Garage. Okay. Not a pole barn. It was a garage. Well, I, I don't know what style construction. Okay. A garage and a house. That's what it Correct. was for. And was any were any questions asked? Was he going to have any type of business or anything in it? What did he say? What the use was for? He, yes, he was asked what he was going to use it for, and he was. They were told a garage for classic cars. A garage for classic cars. Okay. Um. And did um. The house that's on the site, is Mr. Wentworth living in that house? I mean, I'm not being nosy, I'm just asking because it's- Yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay, because I know right now they they live, they have a different address on the application. So I didn't know if he was, is, is or it, is living there now or is moving in in the future? No, we live there now. Okay. <clears throat> You, I hope you understand my concerns, Mr. Wentworth. I mean, I'm not here to bust no, down. No, I get it. But, but, I get it. But this, this is completely backwards. I mean, we, we're used to seeing a concept site plan, and if you had come in with a, a good concept site plan tonight and asked us for a lot of these things, um, so you wouldn't be If I could. Um, Go ahead. No, if I could, like I said, um, the original was the, you know, half the workshop and half the store cars. Um, then, it, you know, after uh, we started the construction, um, you know, then it just was a situation where it was over. I didn't know enough information about the square foot rule and all that for a home-based business. And um, 
basically, you know, I'm learning all this stuff after the fact. Um, so, you know, it's my error on that, I guess. Did you ever think to call Lugum and ask him, or, or even Mr. Hunt, or whoever did? did your well, <clears throat> before I even bought the property, I wanted a home-based business, and that was, and they said it, RPD is approved for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just didn't know the, you know, the 500 square feet. I didn't know there was a rule on square footage. Um, but now this has kind of turned into more than just, a, you know, the, you, it's being asked for more than, than I kind of even want, you know. Yeah, you if got, that makes sense. It's hard to explain it, but. Well, you got quite the business going on there. I mean, it's, it's a... a uh, I've, I've heard more than one person state, you know, over time that I wonder what's going on, what's going into that big building, you know, on that. I mean, everybody rides by there, goes to the hand. Yeah, I mean, I'm open, but it's, <clears throat> but the, it's drawn up. It has cars in it and stuff like that on the ends. And it's just a middle section is the workshop. Well, um, it's just a big garage. It's, half, it's personal and, you know, garage space. Well, I mean, have you opened it up as a business now? Um, we store stuff in it. That wasn't, do you, do, that wasn't a question. Do, are you are you open? Do you have a business now? Are you producing anything in in there now? Um, we currently work out of it. Yes. Okay. Um, what are they doing in there? Do you have a question, Mr. Van Kirk? Since, since uh, Mr. Wentworth's working out of there, what type of work are you doing? Um, no fabrication, welding and you know, building um, anything from handrails on a house to I'm um, going to road a lot to do different things to just mainly you know, just metal construction stuff. Signs, yard art, you know, ornaments, you know, whatever. So, you, so you're not doing any auto repair and auto body work? No. Nope. No. Are you doing any? The only cars in that building are personal. The only cars in that building are personal. How about any truck modifications or anything like that? Uh, no, we'll do like um, truck bodies, you know, like weld bodies and stuff like that. Well, I'll, I'll be up front with you. I mean, I went online. It's not, not hard to do anymore, especially if I've got any young kids in the house, they can show me how to do things. Um, mm -hmm. they, I know you have a page on Facebook, and, and you have your own website, and it shows, shows some elaborate um, um, work going on in the shop, and that, that, that can, that's part of my concern. I mean, we're going from a, a small small shop to where um, you're working on, when I say a tractor, I'm talking about a truck tractor this time, not a farm tractor, um, doing some modifications and, and such to that. Um, do you have uh, paint booths and things like that uh, to, to paint? No, no, sir. Paint any of your equipment? We don't do any painting out of there. Okay, because I saw there's a we do. there's a big fan, I think, on the side or, or, or a shutter, shutters for a fan. I didn't know if you were doing or was that just? No, it's just an exhaust fan. We do. For ventilation. We do powder coating, which is... Yeah, we do powder coating, which is eco-friendly. It's mm -hmm. no hazardous materials. Um, we do not any kind of, we don't have any kind of hazardous waste or any kind of paint products in that building. Other than maybe Rust-Oleum cans or something, but um, we do not do any painting or anything like that in there. Um. Mr. Bill Hunt, well, well, not Wayne, uh, Mr. Bill Hunt, um, if what he has right now, I mean, we know what he asked for at the beginning, but um, if he was to come before your staff right now, go to the desk and say, I want to build that, like that, would that be approvable in the RPD? The use that Brandy read, that Miss Glenn read, production um, industry custom industry custom is allowed in the RPD. So the description that he gave of the things that he's fabricating out of metal, the handrails, and I forget what else he said, would follow and would be placed in, under that zoning district. So had he approached land use and growth management to ask questions about could he build that type of facility to do those things, 
then we would have told him you would need a concept site plan. Right. But uh, based on the description of the use category and the agreement between what he just said he's doing and what's allowed in that use category, he would have uh, prepared his concept site plan and come before the planning commission with the concept site plan. He, he would not have been given a, a permit because He'd had to, the concept site plans first. He'd had to do the concept site plan first, which we've seen countless of, um, I don't know if Mr. Uh, I'm just going to say Bill and Wayne, so you all know who I'm talking about tonight. Makes makes it a little easier on me. I hope it makes it easier on you. But I don't know how when Wayne started working in the project, um, how far in, how far out, but I'm sure he would have been able to guide Mr. Wentworth in the, in the proper path of, of, of concept site plans and such like that. I mean, it's not like this board uh, uh, is in the business of turning down businesses, local businesses, things like that. But um, the board does have a problem when things are done backwards um, and um, promises are made up front and then they aren't kept at, at, the, at the rear of a project. And while I'm saying that, um, we uh, in our packets we had some letters from some of the neighbors that uh, not on the side but live in the, live in the back. Um, Mr. Wentworth, did you talk to them about that and tell them you were just going to build a garage? <laughs> home in a garage? No, I've been up front with everybody from day one about a home-based business. Um, and as, to answer real quick on that, um, I did say I wanted to add trees, but I was told until this gets um, approved not to do any more in that area because I might have to rip it out or vice versa. But I personally want to plant trees because, you know, I don't want them to see the building and I want, you know, I want to be a you know good neighbor. Um, but I was basically told not to touch any of that area until after the concept was approved. Well, so, you know, until we had a, a permit. One of my biggest things on this board, and if you've ever seen me in the past, is you have to work with your neighbors. Um, Oh yeah, and absolutely. If, I agree. Well, and, and you're saying that you know you, you were told not to do anything because you're afraid you get tore out. Well, you should have thought about that before you put that building that close back there. You know, um, tree a tree or a bush is very easy to move. A building isn't. I mean, if I if I yeah. if I really had my way, um, and I'm speaking personally, I'd tell you to pick that building up and move it to that 65 foot line, just because you told the, those folks that you were going to the things that you were going to do haven't been done, and you didn't come before us to get a site, concept site plan. It's just you, you did things you did things backwards, and that's that's the only way I can I can put it. Um, this is this is allowable in that district, but just the the way it was going about. About um, um, coming to be um, didn't have to be that way, sir. It, it didn't, and I would think um, you being a county boy yourself, that that you would know that there's there's a plenty of people uh, that you could ask, or could have asked that could have uh, led you down a straight, good straight path, and you wouldn't have one the problems that you're going to have with your neighbors because that's going to be hard to make up with. I mean, they're still like I say, I look I look down there, it's a, it's a bad looking back there along that driveway and such. Um, if you're going to take care of your, you know, if you're going to be a good neighbor, you got to take care of your neighbors first. I, I, I always, yeah, I always say that to an applicant. Um, that start, you know, that 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 starts out a, a good feeling all the way around. You wouldn't have that problem. Um, that's my. No, opinion. that's my intention is to do that. Well, it's not going to be your intention. If it comes to be, it's going to be something you're going to have to do. I mean, it's going to be uh, no, 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 no fans or butts about it. Um, you weren't ever thinking about asking to try to get this lot rezoned, were you? No, no, it's never been. You talking about the zoning commercial? Yes. No, that's never been the intention. Okay. I just want to live here and walk to work. I'm just, I'm just asking yeah. because we're, we're going backwards now, so I have to ask these questions now. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's, it's this is kind of morphed into. It's just kind of morphed into more than. I just, you know, I just wanted the work bay in the middle, forty by eight, and the rest have a car storage. But you know, because of all the regulations or whatever's got to be done, it's turned into kind of a it has to be in a, a commercial, basically building. Well, you've got you got, you know, so. got quite the business there. I mean, it's it's easy to see. I mean, I can bring you up pictures. Yeah, but it's not as big as it's not as big as the uh, it's not as big as what it looks like on it. 
on that building. So. Well, then you had a hell of a photographer that day because, um, as I say, the pictures that I saw on, on both the website and, and the Facebook page, it's, it, it's an elaborate operation. Plus, outside, you've got forklifts. Uh, you've got, um, I'll say, uh, uh, trucks with um, lifting devices on, small cranes, things like that. You have a lot of, a lot of things going on around that building. And if you're saying that your mm -hmm. if you're saying your business is just starting out, well then we know that come that come this spring there's going to be a lot of things I'll say uh, stored on that lot uh, for any any work that you've got you got a, evidently you got a hell of a business going on there, so um, I mean it's it's not going to get smaller I don't think, it, um, especially this winter with the weather that we've had come springtime, uh, if you're doing now. The way you're doing it now, I, I would think by then you're going to you're going to uh, have quite a, quite a big business going on. And it, it, it concerns, as I say, my biggest concern is is the letters I got from the neighbors, and 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 I don't know if they're going to call in tonight for public testimony. But they're, for what they're saying, and all of them seem to be saying the same thing, is um, they uh, they feel that um, you know you you're not worried about them at this point. You know you you. You came back no. close to the road, and it's it just it, it just doesn't look good, you know. It's, and I and I hate to think of any applicant if you had done it straight up, you'd have known about the variance and the process of that. It, it would make it a lot easier because um, I'm sure that I'm not going to speak for the board of appeals, but we've got a lot of questions tonight. But I can tell you, they're going to have a lot of questions when they get to you too. So um, yeah, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could just. Touch on those those letters briefly. Sure. I, I understand the concerns that are raised, but um, and I understand you know their neighbors and, and they don't necessarily know the language uh, of Lugum and the Planning Commission uh, and engineers and surveyors. But I I'm not offended, but I I, I do take uh, issue with with the the categorization even in the subject lines as as an industrial zoning rezoning request um it, candidly that that's not what's happening here um did mr Wentworth do backwards uh i think that is i think everybody would would concede that here but um at bottom what he's asking for is is approval of a, a permitted use he's, he's not asking for an industrial rezoning and, and the one letter talks about you know a uh, in, industrial park that that's not what we're we're asking for we're we're asking for a, a permitted use to to concept site plan approval for a permitted use uh in the rpd um so i, I just want to to clarify that um that the the letter well if um, i think if he had talked I, to his neighbors a little i don't know if it was more, intentional would, but i think it's a little bit of a, a miscategorization well i mean they, they don't know i don't think and and in that case i don't know i mean it, it's it's quite the site there now i mean he's got he's got he's got a, a good business a big business and i think that their concerns when that when they asked weren't answered so that that concerns them i mean they look at they, they look I, I at what invite anybody yeah I, I don't I, I understand those points um, and, and that I, I certainly respect those um, as their neighbors I was just drawing the distinction and making it clear that that we're not seeking an industrial rezoning yeah. that's all I did was ask so, I just wanted to know you know okay. I mean it was bought up yeah. in, in a couple different instances and I I mean there's a lot of things I don't know what what's going on because and I told you I'm gonna use this a lot we're working backwards tonight if it, if it come in the other way straight up we'd know we would know all these things so uh, in order to find out i gotta ask so um, and it's just something and i want it in the record uh, and, and that way so the neighbors will know he just said i'm not going to do anything like that might give them a little bit more peace of mind um as i say I, i'm i'm looking out for neighbors we're, we're, we're in, they're, they're in a very rural setting there i mean you, there are other businesses along that road with furniture businesses uh the, the leather shop man i, I don't know uh, um, I'm ashamed that I don't know their name, but I can tell you what they do. All those little shops along that road. I mean, there's a lot of little businesses along that road, but it's very rural. Everything is tucked back in, 
and uh, he's got he's got quite a quite a building right out there on that road, and and they don't call it Busy Corner for nothing. I think if he had turned this thing around and put that building up and up towards that intersection, a lot of this wouldn't wouldn't be happening tonight. And and of course, gone to Lugham and done done the concept site plan the right way, you wouldn't have it. But um, it's there now. So we these these questions and. Um, um, and getting the answers is, is, is very important tonight for, for, for this board member anyway. I've done a lot of talking. Somebody else want to ask a question? I'll ask a couple. Oh, Brandy, Go ahead. I'll ask a couple real quick. Um, one for Brandy or Bill Hunt. As this was built, it was applied for a permit for a garage. Is it built the exact same way? Had they done concept site approval and asked for use number 83, does well, I guess what I'm saying is, does what's there, had they said we want a classic car storage garage or we want a welding fabrication shop, is it, is the stormwater management the same, the parking the same, the building, could it, could it be the same? Would it have been the same design, okay, for concept site approval. I mean, we're, we're seeking concept site approval, but it's after the fact. I guess what I'm saying is, is what they put there, would it have gone there if they didn't ask for a, just a standard home garage and went through the concept site approval plan first? Is that what would be there? No. Mm -hmm. If they had, if the, if the approach to land use and growth management had been, I want to do a commercial building that's allowed in the zoning district, Ms. Glenn would have inquired as to what uses were going to be in there. And you've heard entered into the record tonight that the uses that he proposes are allowed under a certain zoning mm -hmm. category. But at the same time, the other things that would have or should have been discussed or would have been, they would have been discussed at our end would have been you're up against residential property you're going to have to have a large buffer along there or you could conceivably apply for a variance that would be before it was built so that if this board said wait a second this property is undeveloped except for a house as i understand it or the house may be brand new too i'm not really sure but if it if it seems to be a situation where the business use could have been built without need of of a variance for a buffer this board may have said you have to build it without the variance and once again because it wasn't built the site plan would have been modified to reflect that uh, lsr would certainly have been able to do that and lsr I'm confident would have known at the time that the plan was submitted, even though they're working for their client, uh, would have cautioned that you've got a buffer issue because you're a business against residential. But since that wasn't what was presented, we are where we are tonight. But, but not talking about the buffer, let's just say it's built without a buffer requirement, like, like it was. I guess physically, what's there physically? not taking the account of any um, buffers. Had they came in initially and said, we want to do a commercial building, use 83, limit it, whatever it is. Would they be allowed to build that? Would that, would that be okay? Yes. To be there, okay. So, I mean, they wouldn't have had a- With what Mr. Hunt just said. You but might I, see I was just talking about physically. Because you know, of the buffer, you know, to allow f for the buffer to be built. Well, yeah, I understand they would have been sent to us first, but I was just, I'm just sure superseding past that and just saying, had they asked for a garage mm -hmm. or a commercial under use 83 limited, is that what would have still been there physically? Right, potentially. The building, the parking spots, the stormwater management, if it passed us. That's, I'm saying, it's not a requirement that the building would have had to be only 5,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet or right. sprinkled or, or nothing like that. It wouldn't have had to have any other requirements. How about the sprinkled part? That doesn't come in under this review. That's a, that's a fire marshal um, determination. And this building may very well need to have sprinklers. But um, 
what they're asking for isn't not permitted. It's permitted. This building, the the way it's built. the way it's built. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just wondering if they. We already know the way they did it was incorrect. I was just making sure that what's there had it passed concept site approval and a variance that would have been okay to if there operate. was other aspects not per the ordinance there would be more variances to request than just the buffer yard so there would have been no oh. if if it wasn't okay i got you so the stormwater management that was put for so a garage that, i i think you should ask wayne yeah bruce's well bruce is here also i think on the line bruce young well i don't think bruce young would know but donnie mills might okay bill might know as well they had to meet the stormwater management regulations because of the size okay. of the building and the limit of disturbance mm -hmm. and mr hunt wayne hunts got those drawn on his and his yeah, I see him. I was just wondering if that was would have had to change any from because it was a garage versus commercial it, use. No, it, to my knowledge, it wouldn't have. It's based strictly on lot coverage and limit of disturbance, and not what's going to go under the roof or in the parking lot or in the driveway. It's, it's strictly a calculation on those uh, lot coverage issues. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have right now. Yeah, so when, when application was made, when Mr. Mr. Wentworth made application, he made application for, did he describe that he was going, he wanted to have a home business? Uh, a moment ago, he testified that that's what I he I don't wanted. recall. You don't know? Okay. But Mr. Wentworth, was that, was that your intent to have a, a home business? You you sort of yeah before before i purchased the property i went there several times just to make sure i wanted the home-based welding business and they read off what rpd stood for and said it would work um, the plan was presented where I, I i guess you guys have seen the building because uh, i mean they reference to it but the side bays the side bays were grass and i was going to store cars in those areas and the middle part of that building was the actual welding shop, um, which is 3,200 square feet. Um, and like I said, the um, that was what you know. I asked when you know went in there. I didn't at the beginning of it. I didn't know 3,200 is not permitted without concept and all that stuff. And that's why we're here now. Um, you know, just, you know, figured it was in that zoning and, you know, didn't know, you know, it was a square footage and had to, you know, variance and had to be everything had to be adjusted after, you know, over 500 square feet. Yeah. And, that, and that's, that's the point I was trying to make that, you know, home, you know, home business, yeah. is, you know, it's 500. Before we even, right. In the RPD. Yeah. In the RPD. But it's, it's not clearly. I'm sorry. Good. No, I'm just saying at the beginning when I, before I even bought the property, I asked that before I bought it and presented it. I didn't, I was unaware of that, that threshold of 500 square feet. Well, so, so we've eclipsed that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got it. So, yeah, so, so we're, we're, and, and when we're talking about a garage permit for a garage and it's not my place to say how big your garage should be. But would we agree that 7,000 square feet is a fairly good sized garage? And I would say- it was oh, That's a good garage. Well, you know, I'm just, I'm just, what's what I'm saying? I mean, it's, you know, um, it's atypical of, of what you would imagine a garage would be, in my view, just as my, you know, observation. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I drove by, I, you know, I, I looked at it. I hadn't been there for a while. And I was surprised as I, as I um, went, yeah. down, went down the street. Um, because I had I had um, realized it was a garage and I didn't expect that. Um, I, you know, I guess, you know, you, you go to land use and growth management, you make application for a garage and then it evolves into, into, into what we see here tonight. Um, and, and I am, like Mr. Thompson, a bit perplexed and, and I, you know, we there's we don't have to worry about whether or not 
who who dislikes projects because people that are next door, if they don't particularly care for them, they will voice that. They will voice that. And so um, I read through that, and you and, and basically you take a lot of that, you know, sort of with. Um, but but it is bothersome, especially when I see um, in, in one of these uh, uh, notes where uh, someone apparently had re you apparently had reached out and asked if you could trim some trees or trim that lot line, I guess you know. And when you look at those pictures, I mean they're trimmed clearly. So you, from the roadway to the building, you can see clearly there is no buffering there at all, none. Um, and so. Uh, that that again is bothersome. I mean, it's bothersome if, if I was a resident, if I was living next door. Um, and sometimes it can be bad enough just with a two-car garage, you know. Um, but but this is not what this is. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to put trees, I want to plant all that stuff back there. But I just like I said, we got to get through all this. Yeah, and and. Uh, <laughs> The issue is this is like walking through mud, trying to do all of this backwards. We, you know, and, and, and you can't. It is what it is. It's it's there. You know, to say that it would have been so much simpler and easier had it go the other way um, is um, is clearly an understatement. Um, so anyway, um, you you say you don't do any car repair there. You say you don't do any body work there. Um, you're going to do just welding, and and I would be the first to tell you that that uh, I don't know what you're going to do with it, um, but I would I would tell you that those neighbors are going to be the first to say that you're going to be painting cars and you're going to be doing repair work, and I, and that's I guess beyond the scope of what we're going to what we talk about here. Um, and I guess my, the biggest problem I have is it's gone, this has gone so backwards, um, and it's just it's odd for us. We don't, you know, typically, you know, um, sometimes it's hard enough to sit here and, and go through it, you know, one, two, three, four, as opposed to four, three, two, one. Um, so anyway, I, I may have some other comments, but I, I'm just sort of confused. Patty, you got any questions? No questions. I'm uh, both confused. Uh, do do any of the other board members have any questions? I mean, I'm not done yet either. Yeah. Just trying to do a little round robin here. Um, Mr. Hall, do you have any uh, questions? No, sir. Mr. Fazekas, do you have any questions? Yeah. Questions, comments. Um, you know, so let me first look at this application. It seemed like a no-brainer. You know, somebody doing a home business wants to uh, improve upon it, get everything done, you know, for the book. I first start looking at the packet and what had already been done, and the the, the photos, uh, you know, both online and from you know what was submitted. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I heard uh, Mr. Wentworth's uh, testimony about you know not being aware of some of these setbacks and such. Uh, and maybe this is my me being naive, but you know it says it's a it's a pole barn construction. So can a pole building be moved? Um, and if and if so, is there any way to remedy this? Not in the immediate, but have some kind of uh, plan of action, if you will, to remedy. Any of the concerns that we may have as a body, or that the, the neighbors would have as well, um, because clearly I think this, this is something that's going to, um, you know, it, it be here for a while. And um, yeah, I'm just, you know, and I, I'm sorry if my thoughts aren't the clearest, <laughs> uh, but the other thing, you know, about the buffers is. I'm, I'm a real stickler about the buffers. Um, when the the plan for the county was written, um, these setbacks were put there for a reason. And for like the rural preservation district, you know, uh, for some of these uh, these lines, you know, a 60 foot setback is, is kind of what's needed to keep that rural character. 
as soon as you start saying it's okay to skip those, then it becomes almost like uh, the chairman said, a rubber stamp. Like, well, okay, well, you said it for Project X. Now, you know, we're in Project Double Z, and we want the same reduction. And then next thing you know, it's not a rural-looking area anymore. It looks just like downtown Lexington Park. Um, now, I do know that, you know, in the development district, we have uh, reduced or, um, you know, I, I guess... Uh, accepted a proposal, concept site plan, you know, with the reduced buffers because it was already in a very developed area. Um, but in this situation, <clears throat> you know, I'm just not really sure, uh, you know, is there any other way to, to create that buffer uh, with everything else that's being proposed and to somehow correct the current infringements on the buffer so that everybody wins you know the county's plan is 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 honored and that the uh, the business is able to continue so, so it's kind of an open-ended question i'm not really sure you know what kind of response i'm expecting if any i it's just kind of i'm throwing it up there you know thinking out loud if you will Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Evans. Yeah, thanks. Um, so there's n there's nothing in me that is opposed to cottage industries, cottage businesses in the rural preservation district. Um, I've been developing businesses since the 70s. All small business. It's difficult. It's expensive. Some do well. Others, not so much. When I look at this, it's the scale of this. It's the, it's, it's, um, when I look at it, do I see it as a small business? Do I see it as a cottage business? Do I see it as a home business? Um, and again, it's the scale within the confines of the Rural Preservation District for me. Um, uh, it's clearly, I just don't see how it becomes, or could become a home business. I just, it's gotten, you know, that, Horses have left the barn when it comes to that, I guess. Um, and while and while I would, you know, I, I I encourage people to consider small businesses in the Real Preservation District. And I would certainly encourage them to apply, you know, one, two, three, four, as opposed to what we had here. And again, I can't get past the scale of this building um, in the community with the other what I call cottage business, you know, businesses along the roadway there, and they are everywhere, you know, small businesses. Um, so it's, it's not, for me, it's, it's not that it's a, it's a business, again, it's the scale of the business um, in, that, in that community. Um, and and I, I just- There's bigger ones on the road than this. I'm sorry? I said there's bigger scales like a less than a quarter mile from me, head like this. What would that be? What would that, yeah, but, what would that be, Mr. Wentworth? There's um, a Peterson SWM, an excavating company down here. Like, there's pretty much businesses all the way up and down this road, down Busy Corner. Oh, sure, I know. I agree um, with you. All of them. Yeah, and they're all big. I mean, <laughs> like I said, it, the garage is big, but I have it's half personal, half work. So, it's what? you know, that's, that's my only need. What's that? I didn't, I didn't hear that part of that. It's, it's what did you say? No, it's, it's half personal use and half, and half business. Oh, well, so. I, I don't know that I would agree with that. It appears, it appears to me to be one, one building, and I'm not sure what you do within the confines of that building. I mean, that's not something I can, I can say one way or the other. I mean, I'm not, I don't. You know, I'm not here to say that's not accurate because I don't know. But I am. I am yeah. here to say. I am here to say that uh, the scale of the building in that community um, is large, and it doesn't, in my mind, um, uh, it doesn't, in my mind, it's not a cottage sort of business that I would I would think about in the rural preservation district. Um, 
and yeah, there are other there are other buildings and, and businesses along along the way, um, um, but but a lot of them are not um, sort of wedged in the middle of private homes uh, that require setbacks or buffer or, 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 or conversations about buffers. So, okay, and that's it. And I'm to piggyback off of that, um, there are some big businesses around there. I, I don't know that they have buildings quite that large, but along those lines also, they're tucked, they're tucked in a spot where you don't notice them. I mean, every, there, there's nothing, there's no businesses of, of that size that are right on the road like that. And, and, and of course, with the houses next door, I won't even get into that part of it. But you, got the, you got the auction market across the street that's even bigger. That's got a lot more traffic and stuff. That that that's a completely to me a completely different business. That that's only open a couple of days a week. Um, that's a, was I don't know exactly who that's owned by. Whether that is run by the county no. or if that is no Stoffers Stoffers right Stoffers uh, Amish. But that's I mean they, that's they came they came before the board if i'm not mistaken and they got permission to do so and then they went in the right way um they didn't have a total disregard for the neighborhood they 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 did things right and and they got the permission um from what mr evans is saying um you know half personal half half business um, with the things I saw online, not with the pictures that, that are, were included in the packet tonight, but you had a, um, a business sign uh, over top of the, I'll say where the glass door, where the two windows are um, there. So, so, you know, what part is business and what part is, is, is personal? Um, it's going to be hard to, to, to judge that or, or to figure that out, one, unless somebody comes in and inspects it. And, and we don't want people to... Who wants somebody to come inspect in their place all the time to make sure th you know things are right? I'm fine. No, I mean I'm fine. Like I said, it's you know it's it's it looks like a big building, but there's there's walls and partitions in there. So it's it's you know what the exterior footprint does. It is big, but there's petition walls in there separating business and personal garage space. Well, I realize that because you you do powder coating and such, and you can't do certain things in certain parts where you're doing where you're doing welding and things like that. Things have to be separated. You're going to have to have walls, uh, yeah. otherwise you, you you'd have a bad product that would come out of there. So walls walls yes, are sir. walls are a must in there. Um, I want to ask um, staff uh, two things. And, and, and I guess you, you too, Mr. Wentworth. Suppose we suppose we weren't to approve this tonight, uh, Mr. Bill Hunt. I asked. Uh, suppose suppose we weren't to approve this tonight, they would what be able to go to Board of Appeals and, and try to get approval with along with a variance at, at the same time. They can appeal a decision of the Planning Commission to the Board of Appeals. Mm. If that happens, then the Board of Appeals meets as if it is. Yeah, because they're going to have to go to the Board of Appeals anyway. They are. I mean, that, that's that's a given. And um, suppose the variance. Now, I'm, I'm just I'm not speaking for the Board of Appeals, but suppose the Board of Appeals was to turn that down. What 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 would you? have that applicant do or or who would who would it be up to okay everything gets turned down i'm not saying it is mr wentworth i'm just i need i need questions answered and mr weigel because i i see that intense look that you got right now so i'm just saying suppose everything was turned down what what could happen i mean could they say he's got to take the back part of that building off or or would they have to buy property you know say from from the neighbor and, and move a driveway or something like that what what would what would be his options at that time or mr weiskopf if you want to answer because you're getting up and you got that oh, john well, wayne look was here but i i could, <laughs> I could certainly answer it I, if the board were to not approve the concept site plan tonight you know obviously the board has you know can approve it can disapprove it or approve it with conditions but if the board so chose to not approve it then what would happen is he would be allowed to use that garage the way he originally requested which was as a residential garage 
We would, if it's a resident, if it's a residential garage, he doesn't need the 65 foot buffer, correct? That's, correct. That's why we're here. Okay. Right. Is because he went to commercial, well, you know, and the site plans required, but the whole problem is that when he went from residential to commercial, you know, he now needs that 65. And if you're to ask me, you know, what sort of row he has to hoe at the Board of Appeals, you know, for the uh, variance request, you know, there's a couple standards that are going to be hard to meet, right? One of them's, uh, you know, are did you, you know, did you in any way contribute to your need for a variance? You know, what's what's the answer to that? You know, is it what's what's peculiar? about this piece of property that needs a variance, right? But again, that's, that's for, you know, that's discussing a variance with the Board of Appeals. But um, if, if, you're to, if you guys, you know, turn it down, then it simply goes back to the residential garage, which is what he, he asked for when he went to land use and growth management in the first place. Um, and I, I want to apologize because this laptop that I have here blocks half of the screen that's between Mr. Bill Hunt and myself. Ms. Summers, I didn't ask you if you had any questions. I can only see certain names and I do apologize. I did not ask you if you had any statements or questions at this time. And uh, as I say, I apologize for that. No, that's okay. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, my concerns echo what I've already heard everyone else say. Um, disregard for the neighborhood, um, the change of plans without adhering to the appropriate procedures um, is a problem for me. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? So, oh, go, go ahead, Patty. Go ahead, there. Um, Mr. Hunt. They... Which, which one? <laughs> Bill or Wayne? Bill. Okay. <laughs> Did they come and ask you? Did um, they come and ask for a um, permit for a home office or a home? Not to my knowledge. What they applied for in the permit that they were granted was a residential accessory structure, which was which could be used for residential uses. Most commonly, it would be for a garage, as has been described for um, collectible cars, would be a logical thing that you might need a large garage for. You might have a large boat that you would put in there. Right. The, what the homeowner might need to store in a building that large for residential use would be would have been the assumption of uh, under which the permit was granted in other words we wouldn't question what you're going to store in there it's just a residential accessory structure and that's as far as we would look the idea of was it going to be a home business i can't testify as to whether or not that was mentioned but it has been put into testimony tonight, and it is a fact that in the RPD, if you have a home occupation, the maximum square footage allowed is 500 square feet. And that business that you're allowed to have cannot change the character of the neighborhood. So you can see there are a couple of factors at play here that kind of are conflicting with one another. Right. But the idea that, that you would come in and say, I want a building this large and out of that building, I'm only using the 500 square feet for our home occupation, and nothing else in that building is gonna be used for commercial use. I'm not gonna need the parking spaces, I'm not gonna need the handicap accessibility, I'm not gonna need the, the sign. You're allowed a certain number of, you can have a six square foot sign, for instance. You can have some of the things that you need, but it, it wouldn't have, we wouldn't have questioned it, but it would have been an odd request to have a garage this large, a residential accessory structure this large, with the applicant telling us that at the same time he would be applying for a home occupation to use 500 square feet for a business, and the rest of it was residential accessory structure only. But it would be, it is necessary 
for an owner to come in and request a permit if they want to have a home-built based business. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. They do have to apply. And at that time, you would let that applicant know that it can only be 500 square feet, if, correct? Yes, ma'am. It doesn't. So he could have come in and said, I'm going to use 500 square feet of my garage for a welding business. That's OK. I mean, you put even though it's a 7,000 square foot building, you would, I mean, you have to, if that's all he's going to ask, if he's only going to identify 500 square feet, you would probably maybe later on send an inspector in there. I don't know how y'all manage that. We, but, we could, the, the recent complaints against home occupation have been from neighbors because the intensity of the activity greatly exceeds what one would expect in a 500 square foot uh, space. And upon investigation on the two cases that are, that are fresh in my mind, the one was a couple years ago and one was just a few months ago, was that yes indeed, they had exceeded the 500 square feet and they had to move the business elsewhere. Gotcha. And I've heard of that happening before. But the point is, it doesn't matter if it's 10,000 square feet. He got a permit to build that garage. Correct. So now he's decided to utilize part of that for a business. So the question in my mind, I mean, I understand the disregard for the neighbors and the disregard for procedures. I, I mean, these laws are complicated. Planning and zoning is complicated. I, you know, I can understand why some people just get in a do loop and don't know what to do. But the point is, if he had to come in and ask for a home-based business for 500 square feet, that would be okay. And it's up to you guys to figure out if it's really happening. Well, there's two points to that. Some uses are allowed as home occupation and some aren't. So the first thing would have been to, to get a description and see if that was within the realm of what's allowed as the 500 square feet. And if it were, and it would be on the permit and, and you would comply with the other requirements of a home occupation, and yes, you would go, go forward with your home occupation. And then if it seemed like it, it was attracting the attention of the neighbors with the amount of activity, then we would have an investigation. Right. So my last question is, if I understood correctly by all the discussions tonight, given what he has today, the 65 foot buffer doesn't come into play. Is that correct or did I misunderstand that? What, he, what he's using the building for today, yes, the 65 square foot buffer does come into play. It would have been a requirement of the concept site plan had one been submitted for this use in this zoning district. Even with a home-based business of 500 square no, feet? No, no, uh, you, okay. I, you're, I thought you said for what he has today. Well, I meant the building itself. For what he has today, a residential accessory structure, he met the required setback. That's what I, that was my question. Right. And the 500 square foot would have been all right too. For certain uses, yeah. So the question is, it's because of what he has what he's doing today within that structure that's causing the angst, I mean the issue, because it's greater than the 500 square foot. And again, I'm not sure that the kind of business that he has could be done as a home occupation, but let's assume for the discussion that it is. Okay. Then. I need to be, I just need No, I, I don't have, the, have the, the, the list in front of me to know. And it might be a judgment call, so I'm not quite sure I'd even be able to answer it if I was looking at it. But, but. Yes, if it were a legitimate home occupation in that residential accessory structure, that would be allowed with things the way they are today. Okay. So the issue is of the, what he's doing today as, as it relates to the business. Correct. Okay. I think I'm uncomplicated. I mean, I'm un... I understand. And, and, and if you have a business, for example, I mean, I, I applied, you know, for a permit for a home occupancy, but I just, but you, they ask, they describe what you're going to do. 
Right. And then once you make you describe that, it was my understanding back when this happened that land use and growth management will actually do a drive, you know, sort of drive by, you know, and they'll look to see if there is, you know, <coughs> you are a uh, construction business, and but it's your construction business office, uh, you're and you're an office within the confines is 500 feet, whether it's an accessory building or not, that's permissible. But if they if they come by or the neighbor shouts out. And you've got backhoes and trucks and things like that um, there. Then you're going to have to move all that. You can't. You can't do that there. So land use and growth management did a drive-by, you know, doing what I was doing, which was nothing like that. But you, you make application for what you're going to do there, and then it's either allowed within where you are, or it's not. And and this is allowed. I mean, this building is allowed. It's just I'm not. It's it's just not what he's doing is allowed. It's the use right. of the building. Right. That's the issue. Yeah. Gotcha. Can I say something? If I could, there's there's um, several other the same type of businesses in the area that do the same thing with the same equipment. Go ahead, Brandon. Go ahead, Brandon. Um, Mr. Wentworth has stated multiple times that only part of this this structure is going to be his facility, his welding facility. But this concept site plan is for a 7,040 square foot welding fabrication facility. So, regardless that some of it might be for a personal garage. If this concept site plan is approved as drawn, this whole thing is going to be for the welding and fabrication facility. I just want to point that out because that's what's on here. Not a part of it, the whole thing. Okay. And not to beat a deep, dead horse, but say Mr. Wentworth was to come into you, he's, he's started getting ready to break ground, do all that sort of thing, and he came to you and said, uh, I want to do a home-based business um, on, on our lot, um, and that's all he said. What would y'all? What would you say to him at that point? Or what? What do you? Th what have you instructed your staff to? to well, the ordinance is pretty clear on most of that. You would have to have an illustration that shows where you are going to have your 500 square feet allowed in the RPD, and you're allowed by memory up to 10 parking spaces, three outside employees, and a six square foot sign. So assuming that you had a use that was allowed as a home occupation, we would wanna see those things. Not necessarily that you would have 10 parking spaces because that seems a little excessive for most home occupations, but however many you needed, and then there would be the question of outside employees as well, and then the sign, which is fairly minor. But that's what we would ask for. Yeah. All right. Let me ask a quick follow-up question, um, Bill and Brandy. Kind of goes along the pattern of what um, Ms. Robrecht was asking and Mr. Evans was commenting on. The 7,000 square foot building, if it was approved tonight, is he only supposed to use 500 of that as a home-based business? No, he, oh. he doesn't have a home occupation permit. He didn't have a permit. He, he's, he's past that. He's not asking for that. Right, so I'm saying he, he would, the only reason I was asking is whether he's using 3,500 or 7,000, he would need a additional variance to get past the 500. No. Okay. I was That's just, only important if he's applying for a home, home occupation. Ba okay. I'm just trying to get the... Yep. feel of, of what exactly that was. Okay, does anybody else have any statements or questions? Any board members? Any of the three out there in TV land? Any, any of y'all have any questions? No other questions or comments. Okay. Excuse me? Mr. Chairman, Joe St. Clair. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to have you uh, do any testifying this evening, Mr. St. Clair.
Sorry. Okay, anybody else? All right, this time I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to public testimony. Um, Brandy, do you want to see, well, before, let's do public testimony. The, the applicant's already had it, his, his, his go around. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a quick question? Yes, sir. Um, since Mr. Sinclair tried to speak as a member and he couldn't, could he speak during public testimony as a citizen? I mean, uh, I'm just, I don't know if he could. I have or, to ask Mr. Weisskopf that. Mr. Weisskopf. He's not sitting on the board tonight. If Mr. Sinclair wishes to be a private citizen and ask a question, I guess he certainly could, but it, it starts to muddy the waters. I mean, you're an alternate of the Planning Commission. I was just wondering. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it, gotcha. but I certainly couldn't stop a private citizen from, you know, doing well, let, let me ask you this while, just while we're in that. that sure. suppose, um, suppose for whatever reason this was to be continued tonight, that mm -hmm. something wasn't answered right or we were looking for something else and then um when we come back from the, from the continuance um mr van kirk's going on a fishing trip he's out out on the boat mm -hmm. mr st Clair comes in then uh, by him watching that tonight he'd be able to sit as a full absolutely board member. and even if he didn't you know let's say he was out of town and didn't watch it Normally what the Planning Commission has always done or the Board of Appeals has done in the past is had the person watch it, you know, watch the video, get up to speed and then sit and then he could certainly ask his questions, right? Okay. Ready? Okay. Do you, uh, do we have any? Oh yeah, public? we have a couple. Okay. Um, go ahead and get the first one on the line and we'll get them sworn in. Okay. I have a script here. You have reached the St. Mary's County Planning Commission public hearing for 20-132. Hello. Hello. If you could turn your 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 phone or your TV down, that would be great. Okay. All right. Okay. You can hear me now. Yeah. yeah. All right. You have reached the St. Mary's County Planning Commission public hearing for 20-132-009. Wentworth Welding and Fabrication request for concept site plan approval. Please state your name and address and Chairman Thompson will ask you to take an oath before you make your comments or ask your questions. My name is James Gilbert Stone Jr. I'm at 40355 Busy Corner Road in Leonardtown, Maryland. Stand by for the Okay, oath. Okay, Mr. Stone. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm counting on you on this. Raise your right hand and, and uh, do you declare and affirm? Right hand. Excuse me? Hand is raised. Okay, thank you, sir. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Did you hear that? No, the yeah. whole truth but nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Go ahead. Um, uh, you, have, you have five minutes. You have five minutes. You have five minutes. <laughs> I would like to. Uh, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to talk. Uh, I lived in Loveville for a long time. Um, I would like you guys to understand that and it, what I watched so far appears that you have is that uh, we come to this residence 
to be raise children, have a good time, not raise uh, businesses and all that. I understand Mr. Wentworth's concern, and he goes, oh, yeah, everybody around here has a business, and they do to help because they need maybe a side business to help do certain things to raise funds for um, maybe because they're Mennonites or maybe not. And that's irrelevant to this case. I've watched this uh, scenario go on for a while and I see Mr. Wentworth has built a enormous building and everybody's seen it and it's supposed to be just for a hobby. Mm, looks a little bigger than a hobby. So, with that said, I uh, wish you would deny his claim for this. And um, I know we don't speak the legal verbiage that everybody knows, like certain people have already said, well, these people said industrial or commercial. And but by the way, we're just saying what it is. We asked him about it when yeah. he was building it. What are you building? Wait, wait a second. I got, I got more than one person. Mis Mr. Stone. Only one person. Uh, you, you can speak. Oh, and, only one person. Okay. Only one person. Sorry. And then, and then, if you want, when Mr. Stone, when you're done, um, you can. The other person can I, get on, and I'll swear them in. I'm the point. They deny this, and Mr. Wentworth doesn't have his business that he should have somewhere in the industrial zone, not here in Loveville. And if it, if he wanted this to be a, just a garage, then let's have it as a garage. Yeah. I'm done. Okay, hold on a second, Mr. Stone. Does any of the board members have any questions of Mr. Stone? I have a, I have one question. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Is, is Mr. Stone a neighbor? Lives right near this or next to it? Mr. Stone, are you a neighbor? Yes, I am. Mr. Stone, um, what have you heard since this has been in operation? I mean, is it extremely loud, noisy, air compressors? You know, uh, is it is it pretty much stayed on Mr. Wentworth's property, or can you always hear what's going on? Did you hear Mr. Van Kirk's question? Stayed on Mr. Wentworth's property, or can you always we'll hear check. what's going on? Did you hear Mr. Van Kirk's question? Um, I heard part of it. Mr. Wentworth's property, or can you always we'll check? You can ask me. I can hear and smell. Can you hear the air compressor? I can hear, I can hear all of that while I'm in my garden. Can you hear the air compressor? Can you hear the air compressor? I can hear all of that okay. while I'm in my garden. Thank, thank you. Okay, um, Mr. 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 Stone. Mr. Stone, I have one more question for you. Uh, did did you and Mr. Wentworth speak before he started this project? Go ahead. Did you and Mr. Wentworth speak before you started he, before he started this project? Yes, we did. About and the project. We spoke. And, and what did Mr. Wentworth tell you he was going to do? He even bought the property because he wanted me to be assured that it was not going to be a business like the ones he already currently owned. So I was like, okay, you just want to live here. But that'll work. Okay. Okay. Is there any other questions, Mr. So, with that said, I said, okay, that'll be cool. You can live. He is not my relative. He is my son's relative. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Is there any other? Is there any board members have a question for Mr. Stone? Okay, Mr. Stone, we thank you for your testimony. Any uh, board members have a question for Mr. Stone? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Okay. Okay, Mr. Stone, we thank you for your testimony. Any uh, board members have a question for Mr. Stone? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good thank evening. You. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. See if we see if we have any more calls. We, we have one more. Good evening. You've reached the St. Marys County Planning Commission public hearing for 20-132. Oh, oh. already. 009 Wentworth Welding and Fabrication. Request for concept site plan approval. Please state your name and address and Chairman Thompson will ask you to take an oath before you make your comments or ask your questions. Good evening. My name is Rita Weaver and I live in Dameron. Okay. Before we go any further, uh, Mr. Weigel, I didn't give you a chance to question Mr. Stone. Um, my, my, all my fault on that. Did you have any questions that you that you had wanted to ask him? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I have nothing. For, nothing I, for him. I apologize. That was my wrong. Um, I won't let it happen again. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, go ahead, Ms. Weaver. You have uh, five minutes. Do you want to swear her in? Yes, I do. See, I'm all flustered now. I did something wrong. I don't like it when I, get, when I do something wrong. Okay. Um, Ms. Weaver, if, uh, if you would raise your right hand, and do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements that you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead. You have five minutes. Okay, good evening, board members. My name is Rita Weaver. On January 26, 2019, Forge World held a grand opening. February 22nd, Howard Wentworth Jr. stated on his Facebook page, this is why we built this shop, being able to pull in just about anything to work on. This post has a 53-foot-long semi in the garage area. There are a number of posts with semis and advertisement for custom truck accessory needs. On the Forge Weld website, there are so many wonderful items to look at and purchase. Just click on the Connex build and check out how Mr. Wentworth takes a 40 by 20 foot shipping container and turns it into a luxury office space equipped, equipped with HVAC drywalls, windows, and electric. There's also information on powder coating and welding, which means there are acetylene containers and other combustible materials stored inside the oversized garage. With all this going on, it does not look like a small welding shop that is being asked for in the permit. Under, development, under the development note on the site plan, it states, this plan was previously approved under DLUGUM 16-1563, but this number links to a permit for a three-bedroom single-family home dwelling. The permit before you is one that asks for change of use and approval of structure that was built and occupied as an industrial business for two years. The permit before you, you list the construction type as 5B unprotected. This is very concerning to me. A 5B has no fire resistant rating, making it the most combustible and susceptible to fire. Does the local fire department have information on chemicals and combustibles in this establishment? Are the walls and roofs strong enough to withstand an explosion and acetylene containers turning into projectiles? If a fire happened tonight, would the volunteer firemen know what lays ahead of them before they enter the building? Where is the water source as required by regulations for a business such as this to put out a fire? Have all safety requirements, environmental permits, OSHA state fire marshal, and stormwater management permits been obtained? When I pass by Busy Corner Road, I see semis parked on the road. This road is narrow, and in order to get around a 73-foot trailer, a car or a horse and buggy must go into the oncoming lane. This is a traffic safety issue and increases the chance of accidents and fatalities. Why is this industrial business allowed to be built and operated in an RPD residential area? And I know somebody uh, commented on the 
uh, that they were offended about the use of industrial. But I'm sorry about that if it offends you, but it certainly looks to me by the pictures that I've seen with what is going on inside that building that it is industrial. If this site plan is approved, you're not only condoning this behavior, but also rewarding by allowing Mr. Wentworth to expand. I'm asking that you do not approve this site plan, and thank you for your time. Okay, well, hold on, Ms. Weaver. Uh, do any of the board members have any questions of Ms. Weaver this time? Mr. Weigel, do you have any questions? Very, very briefly, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Weaver, you mentioned you, you looked at the, the site plan. I assume you've reviewed um, all the agency comments that were part of the staff report? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing. It's, it's very muffled. Did you review all the agency comments that are attached to the staff report? Is Mr. Weigel's question. All the agencies? Correct. The only thing that I saw, I saw the, um, let's see, uh, this, uh, the concept rendering, I saw the PowerPoint presentation and the, um, the concept site plan. Well, I, I just bring it up because you, you mentioned traffic concerns and, and those are addressed in those agency comments. So those might alleviate some of your concerns. Um, yeah, okay, so I did see where you did a, you said that there wasn't enough traffic. I know at one of the, I'm trying to pull it up, the uh, one, I think it's on the first one on the site plan, it talks about the traffic and you've looked at like, you had like two cars go by, there was a traffic, uh, like a traffic study where you had, you looked at so many cars. But the thing is, is when I've gone by, these semis are parked on the road and I've had to go around it. That's what I'm talking about. Did you take any pictures or anything? No, because I was driving. But I okay. will in the future. I have nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask for that, um, Mr. Wentworth, a comment on that. Mr. Wentworth, have, have you had trucks um, either delivering or, or parked on the side of the road as um, Ms. Weaver said? We try to get them to pull in, uh, we try to get them to pull in the driveway. Okay, but that you have had them out on the road. I'll say both. Um, we had a situation where they've been on the road one or two times, yes, sir. Okay. But we try to get we try to catch them and tell them to back in the driveway. Okay. okay. Does anybody else have any questions for Ms. Weaver? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Weaver. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Have a good evening. You're welcome. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay, is there any more? No, it does not look like it. Let me call Kathy. Check and make sure, yeah. <clears throat> this is Kathy Garcia. We have no further public comment. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Okay. Since we have no more, um, and they've had plenty of time to call in at this time, so I'll go ahead and I'll close pub public testimony. And uh, I'll open it up to the applicant for any rebuttal on anything that's been said so far. Mr. Weigel, you have anything uh, you want to add? And then, yes. Then I'm going to open it back up to the board before you give me any closing uh, in case anybody's got any more questions. I don't. I, I would just proceed to a closing. I, I have nothing okay. factually at this point. Do any of the board members um, have any more questions, statements? Okay, Mr. Weigel. Nobody's got any questions. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll let you give a closing testimony, and then we'll begin our deliberations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank all the board members for their their consideration here. I mean, it, it's obvious that uh, the board has has looked at the issue and, and spent considerable time. 
considering the issues uh, before. And, and I do appreciate that. And I, I do appreciate the fact that, as has been pointed out, we're, we're going for three, two, one here. Um, that being said, um, we're now here seeking site, pl site concept site plan approval um, for a permitted use uh, in the RPD. And I appreciate the comments. I, I think we need to not conflate the ideas of a home-based business versus this type of uh, business that we're proposing, which is a production industry custom, which, which is a permitted use uh, within the RPD. Um, that might not sit with uh, our concepts and our minds of home-based or cottage industries, but um, I believe Mr. Hunt, Bill Hunt, sorry, testified that the use as currently being operated does fall within that uh, use definition 83. Obviously, if it didn't, we, we wouldn't be here. It would be another uh, type of application. Um, so I think it's important to keep in mind that we are dealing with a, a permitted uh, use in the RPD here. Um, and I think there are, uh, you know, as Mr. Wentworth testified, other businesses uh, within this area. Um, I understand the concerns that they might be situated differently, but there are other uh, permitted uses uh, within within this this area. Um, so I think that's important to keep in mind too. Um, the other thing I, I would point out is. Uh, Mr. Weiskopf stated, and I agree with this, that if, if this is denied, the the building stays the same. And, and really, with the proposed site plan, you get more screening, you get these buffer regulations and, and requirements here, which, um, again, I don't think are imposed upon the approved building permit plan uh, for for this structure. Um, so, if the concern is is for the neighbors and and sort of screening them and, and protecting them from this large building, as everybody has referred to it, um, I think this this really provides more more protection for them um, because of the enhanced uh, buffer requirements. Um, I certainly think Mr. Wentworth is very open um, about, and he's told me he, any inspections uh, he's happy to to have. Uh, come take place. Um, I think he's a smart enough man to know that he's going to be under a microscope with these neighbors. Um, and if he so much as uh, puts a foot wrong, there's going to be a call uh, to, to county, and I'm sure there'll be an inspector out there uh, before the close of business that day. Um, so he's come in, it's backwards, but he's had this this kind of site concept plan prepared. He's, he's ready to, to move forward. Um, with, with the buffering and, and planting trees and, and meeting whatever other uh, considerations or, or uh, conditions uh, this commission would, would put on a site plan approval. And um, for that, we would, with that, we would ask that uh, the plan be approved. Thank you. Okay, if I, if I understand you right, Mr. Weigel, I just wanna make sure I did understand you. Um, you're saying that if, um, say we were to turn it down and he had it just as his own garage. Um, and I, I guess I'm asking you and, and Bill Hunt at the same time, you're, you're stating that he wouldn't have to do the buffering that, that we're asking for tonight? I, I believe that's, that's correct, Mr. Chairman, is, is that that buffers required as part of a uh, the 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 concept and the and the commercial the use being proposed here if it goes back to being uh, that regular garage and I'll, I'll let Mr. Hunt Bill Hunt uh, testify to that as well he goes back to what he has now and I don't believe that that uh, has that buffer requirement and that's correct the buffers are not required for residential structure so after all that he's not you know. Uh, uh, I'm just a, I'm just an old county boy, but I mean, when you tell somebody you're going to do something, you're going to buffer something. I don't even care about the law at that point. That's my word that I'm talking about. And um, even if it was just his garage, um, my personal thought would be that he would still do what he told his neighbors he was going to do. Um, that's just my opinion. That's, that's, that's just my opinion. 
sure. And he, and he still could. I, I'm just saying that requirement wouldn't be there. If, well, if it's, I mean, I, I just want to. You're it, speaking for him, so that that that's what I'm saying. Is that, you know, I, I, and he hasn't denied it, or either agreed or denied. So, and he doesn't have to. But um, um, you can see where we're at. And and basically, what this my problem come down if he had done it right. We wouldn't be sitting here beating our heads against the wall for this thing. Nobody, nobody in this room d denies a small business. This is this is a little bit bigger than a small business, but nobody here denies business. We're one. This this planning commission, as long as I've been on here, and I've been here, I've been here a little while. Um, we're 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 pretty good pro business people. I mean, there's very very few, I, I can't think of but a couple that that we have turned down, and that's been major highway problems and things like that. Um, and they did things right, they still didn't get it. But most people that do things in the proper way, ask the proper questions um, and, and do what, what is, um, I'll say what's expected of all the other citizens when they do something, if they do it like that, they're in business. Um, this, this is a sad situation, I mean, I, the, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm stumped at this. Um, I'm stumped at this. I mean, I'm going I'm to ask the county attorney in a minute um, just a couple quick questions just so when I go to make my decision tonight, I'm making the, the, the most – I like to have all my, all my facts, you know. Um, it, it, it worries me. This, this, this really it, – it, it worries me now. Just, David, if you could um, – if he goes and just uses this, say say we turn it down, he's got a couple options anyway. But let's let's don't even talk about the board of appeals, the part about the buffering and stuff. He doesn't have to do the buffering. And I'm not questioning you, Mr. Weigel, on 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 your knowledge of this. Just that Mr. Wentworth has his attorney. We've got our. I've got my attorney. So I'm I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him the questions. Um, he wouldn't have to buffer that if he kept that as his personal garage. That's my understanding. That's what uh, Brandy Glenn has testified to. That um, okay, he would not have to do any of that. Okay, and um, that's really all I'm going to ask. I'm, I, 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 I'm, beat, I'm beating it to death. Can we take a couple bathroom break? Take a five minute. Um, before we make uh, any more statements or anything. Um, I have a request. Uh, we're going to take a five-minute recess, y'all. Uh, Mr. Weigel, go ahead and get yourself another soda. Uh, you've enjoyed one during the case. Um, we'll, we'll take a five-minute break, and we'll be back. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Recess for five Thank minutes. Thank you.
itself. That's all. I was going to say something didn't look right. <laughs> there. Hey, everything looks right now. <laughs> okay, we're coming back in the session. Um, some of their pictures disappeared. Mr. Weigel, Mr. Wentworth. Okay, I just want to make sure you all are here with us. Um, we're done with pe public testimony. Mr. Weigel had given his statements. Um, we were going to use some, um, do our last bit of deliberations. Um, I just need Mr. Hunt to one more time to tell me, give me the definition of RPD, if you could. I hate to be a bald. I just, I, 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 need, I need to hear it. Or do you want me to ask Brandy? She's got it in front of her. What, what, either one, whoever wants to give there, it to me. I'm getting there. He's got it there, so we'll, we'll go with him. Oh, yeah. All right. You want to know the purpose? The winner is, yes. Okay. The regulations of the rural preservation districts are intended to foster agricultural, forestry, mineral resource extraction, and aquaculture uses and protect the land base necessary to support these activities. Low density residential development in this type of district is permitted subject to performance standards that maintain the rural character of the district in recognition of the fact that a full range of public facilities is not provided or planned. The farmer has the right to farm without being restricted by neighboring residential areas. Res restricted hours of operation for farm equipment, restricted odor producing fertilizers or mandatory noise reductions may not be imposed on farmers in an RPD zoning district. The general intent of the district is to encourage farming without undue burden on the landowner. Okay, but this uh, this type of work that he says is going on in the garage is permitted in the RPD. So, correct. Correct. Okay. Um, I know one thing. I don't, I don't know. I might have to open this back up and let Mr. Weigel make a comment on this, but. Were TDRs needed for this? One TDR is needed because they are um, exceeding the FAR, the base FAR. Okay. Right. So I believe the auction house across the street probably had to do that too. I'm mm -hmm. sure the auction house he was talking about across the street, you know, being the business, I'm sure they had to do it the same likely. just because of the. It is very likely. The, the sprawl of the site. Okay. Um, do any of the board members have any? Comments, statements they want to make. Probably everybody. Hmm? Yeah, probably everybody. You want to go down the list or just want somebody to speak up? Or All right, well, I'll just ask them. I, I hate to say it, but I'm going to do it just like I do it on the list. And if you don't want to be first on the list, you have to tell me so before the meeting. So um, I'm going to go just how we've been voting all night, Mr. Evans. I can see you shaking your head. But uh, if you don't want to go first, you have to get with me before the meeting and say, I don't want to be that's first. The case, that's the case. Go. go. So, you know, I, and I mean, I, I, statements I made tonight, I mean, I'll, I stand by them. I, I believe that. Can you use a microphone? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How's that? Voice from above will get you yeah, every time. Well, you know. Yeah. Um, as I said, I, uh, the statements I, uh, I made before, uh, I stand by. I, uh, um, uh, application was, was made for a garage and it evolved into something else. Um, I've reached out with regard to doing a home business. Uh, the 500 square feet is, uh, to me, a concern. Um, he's able to do what he's doing now there i mean i have a i have an issue with a fairly large issue with doing all this backwards this would be a process that would be much easier had had we gone the other way but that's not where we are today um uh, the the sheer size of this in the rural preservation district um is a concern i don't i don't see it and i know uh, the attorney referred to it as a cottage sort of industry and then that's in the rural preservation districts. That's actually what I look to. I look for um, uh, perhaps a, a, a welding, you know, uh, opportunity. 
on a scale that is commensurate with the, with the neighborhood. And I just don't see that that's the case. Um, with regard to the buffer, it's, it's true that he would not be required to build a buffer if it were to stay this way. Um, but um, historically, what's required and what, we're, what we actually do uh, are, are two entirely different things. Um, if a neighbor is having issues and has been told that a buffer would be provided, whether or not this moves forward or not, uh, the right thing to do is to provide the buffer. Um, what I saw in, in the comments, I saw that um, someone had asked to trim some trees. Those trees were trimmed eight or nine feet high. There's, there is no buffer. The only thing that's left are tree trunks. Um, and you can clearly from the roadway see you know, the back of that uh, the, the back of that facility, and and again, that's that's just something that, to me, uh, is just neighborly. That's what you would do. And again, I still think that no matter where this goes, I think the right thing to do for Mr. Wentworth is to provide that buffer. Um, and that's really about it. I you know I just um, I I'm I'm really struggling with um, the size of this place um, and the. Uh, the permit, when, it, when, when the permit uh, the, uh, was, was requested, it was a garage. And I just don't know, and, and, and I, I assume, you know, you, assumptions always get us all into trouble. You assume a lot, but, but um, I think that um, um, the building's there. Um, whether, whether or not it's, it's able to continue as a, as a commercial endeavor, um, I'm not so sure that's that's the thing to do. So that's really all I have. Thank you. Mr. Van Kirk. Um I have I have a few points. Of course, like everybody else, I do not like the direction that this project started and where we're at now. But from from what I understand from staff had we reversed it and we're at stage one, the only issue we would really be looking at with all the other approvals, I'm assuming, would be the buffer. That would be the reason, the only reason. I mean, you can always say it doesn't promote the health, safety, and welfare. You know, we've done that many times. But as far as issues, the only issue that we would be here if we went one, two, three, four versus four, three, two, one would be the buffer, which is the same issue that we're really um, looking at. And to give, I did pick up something Mr. Wentworth said earlier, and I, I think this is true. I, I, I may have done the same thing. He said, when somebody asked why isn't the buffer there yet, he said, well, he didn't want to do that until he found out what we decided or what was going to be decided on him. So in, you know, where I can agree that, hey, maybe put the buffer anyway because you're still going to have the garage there. Um, but it, nothing wrong with waiting. We may have said, or somebody may have said, we want a more intensely plan that you can't increase the space, but you can increase the planning intensity. So I don't think there was any problem in my mind of, of waiting. Um, the uses allowed in the RPD, do I think it's, it's a large place and, and I go by the road every day not just to see Mr. Wentworth's facility I just travel that road because I live fairly close and I see it um, from start to finish when he started building I was wondering man that must have hit the planning commission before my 2016 time um, so you know, he's going to have less traffic there he, he's not the only business that is going to have a tractor trailer every once in a while sitting in a roadway. Like say, do I like the direction this project is is in? No, but you know, I think a lot of the issues are the same as we would have with pretty much um, any issue. And the one thing that I would say is if if this is approved, since Mr. Wentworth has really made this a point a few times would he have an objection if the board and i'm not i don't know how the board's going to vote 
if the board said you can only have half of that, as you've stated numerous times, as your workshop, and the other half as a private garage for your antique cars or your boat or your camp or, or, or whatever, if that's something that, that we chose to put as a condition, I'm sure, sure that the board could since he stated that. And as Ms. Glenn stated, the concept site plan says 7,040 fabrication and welding shop. You know, if he's truly not planning on using 7,040 feet, would he stipulate to the 35, you know, half of it? And I'm sure his neighbors would keep an eye, an eye on it. And that's, um, and oh yeah, one more thing. Um, not to downplay what he's done at all, but like I say, I, I go through there quite often. And on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, when the Amish market is in, in use, even though there's no tractor trailers, there's uh, many a uh, delivery truck, tractor with a cart behind it trying to pull out on that road. It's, it, it's, a, it's a, uh, quite a few times you've, I've had to stop in the road so uh, something could, could get out of there. So it is a, a, a lot of traffic use from that for, for just a limited time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever hours they have. And I've seen an occasional Saturday special auction or something, but there's quite a bit of traffic at there, which as many times as I've been by his shop, I have seen trucks in there being unloaded with a forklift and stuff, but I've never seen anything sitting on the road, not saying that you couldn't have it because you always can when you have that, but that was just the last point that I, that I wanted to make. Okay. Ms. Robert? A uh, couple things. First of all, um, I really have no issue with Mr. Um, Wentworth having a welding shop in, in this space if he abided by the rules of a home-based business. That doesn't, I mean, I think that's great. And you said the same thing. So um, what I do have an issue with is the buffer. And I truly believe even if there was no business, there should be a buffer mm -hmm. because of the, the, the size of that building. And for any, if anything, it's for the neighbor's sake. Um, I also am concerned about the neighbors themselves. They're, they're concerned because they think for some reason that it's more than what they, Mr. Wentworth has said it was. They, they're thinking it's more, I believe, uh, the car, bringing in cars and doing, I mean, doing remodeling or whatever they said. <laughs> Um, with the cars and the trucks. Um, lastly, you've got to go to the board any, the, you're, it's going to go to the appeals board for the variance. And that really is what, what concerns me is if, I, I don't believe it should be approved, the move from the 65 foot to the 20 foot. That, then that's my takeaway. So, let the uh, appeals board decide. I, I really can't approve it knowing that there's a possibility it could be 20. Okay. Uh, Ms. Summers, do you have anything? No, I don't have anything. Okay, Mr. Hall. Thank you all covered it. I, I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Got it Thanks, you all covered it. Okay, Mr. Fazekas. Yes, I do. Um, when I was a child, I mean a youth, uh, driving in a new town, I was pulled over doing 45 and a 25. Now I was ignorant of the law. I didn't see the sign. Um, I made a mistake. Um, and, you know, of course, I continued to drive through at the posted speed limit 25. They didn't ask for permission to continue going through uh, the town at 45 because I didn't know the, the law originally. I wanted to make it right. Um, maybe that's not the most applicable thing here, but we have, a, we have a resident of the county that wants to improve or grow his business. 
and I sympathize with that. And I think that's a, a good, a good thing that we want to see. I don't know how this building is constructed. I don't know if moving the building away to the proper setback for a commercial building is is, is even realistically feasible. If it is, you know, perhaps that's something we should have been seeing or should have came up. Uh, looking at the entire lot, you know, if this is really a, a big. Uh, uh, garage, you know, for primarily a private collection of vehicles and, and stuff. Um, I respect that. Maybe it, the, the solution is to build a much smaller uh, building that is uh, within the proper setbacks. Um, that would make everybody happy. The, the the applicant can keep his his car collection and all his toys. In, in a residential garage that is, you know, meeting the residential setbacks, and then build something specifically for the business that meets all the new business rules. Um, that way, there's no confusion on if some if he's doing something on his personal vehicle, if somebody thinks that that's actually work, and it kind of just keeps everything clean there. Um, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't see that as a proposal here um, and instead trying to make this non-conforming building in, 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 the, in the commercial, in the, you know, use, trying to force it to conform, um, it does what it was supposed to do um, as a residential garage. And I think, you know, it should be left at that. And then we really shouldn't be entertaining any kind of change in the, um, the rules that the county has set forth for keeping rural preservation and keeping that, you know, uh, the look of the residential areas with the proper setbacks. Um, I think it's a slight, slippery slope. If we approve it for this, it will just continue on. And next thing you know, you know, that area is not going to look residential or, or um, a, a rural. So, um, yeah, I just. I, I'm just, you know, I, I think the client, would, the applicant would do better, you know, coming back with a modified proposal because uh, I, I don't think uh, I would vote too favorably on, on what I've, I've seen here today. Okay, thank you. Um, being having my own opinion, um, I've never had a project come that I can ever remember come before. Um, while I was sitting on a board like this, um, completely backwards, would have been so easy. I mean, if he had Mr. Wayne Hunt right out front, you know, go go see go see your man, get him straight. He'd have come in here, and and we'd have been probably been home about a half hour ago. Um, this applicant didn't choose to do that, and I have a problem. I have, myself has a problem showing that as an example to others. Well, look, man, you know, this guy went and got this big garage, you know, big production facility built, you know. We don't have to go before them. We'll just tell them we're building a garage and we'll do something ourselves. I don't want to set that example. I want, you know, everybody's got to follow the rules. It's, it's not, not easy all the time, but it, it, it's got to be fair. And I just don't think it's fair to um, other people that go through, do what they're supposed to do through Lugum, through the process, get the right people to take, take them there. Um, you know, that buffer, as, as what a couple of the other uh, board members have talked about, would have made a big, big difference in this. I mean, um, if anybody's ever seen me up here, I, 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 one of the last things I always say is you better take care of your neighbors, you know, when you get this project now that this project's been approved because that that'll make all the difference in the world you have people that'll be next door to you talking good about your business instead of talking bad about your business and in a small county that we have um it doesn't take long to talk about something that's for sure i'm sure it'll be talked about tomorrow morning but um i just don't think he did it right um i think he's more or less said you know he's not worried about that buffer you know and even when if it was turned down still not going to be worried about that buffer um he's got to live next door to those folks you know i'm on county small um i just don't see where it was it, it's fair to to let somebody 
do a four three two one versus a one two three four. Well, as I say, a one two three four. I'm not going to say no brainer, but we're in, we're in a whole different ball field tonight if it was done that way. Um, he's going to go before the board of appeals if this is turned down. Um, well, he's probably going to go before me. The way he's going to have to try to get that variance. Um, they they are going to have a tough night if if they have to take the whole thing. But hey, that's what we're here for. We volunteer. I didn't volunteer for this because because it's a fairly fun job, and uh, you know we're here to have some fun tonight. I didn't want to be home, but um, I'm here to make sure that the people in the county are taken care of and and treated equally. And I don't and, I, and if in my heart. I don't think they would be if I approved it. That's all I got to say. Um, anybody else have anything? All right, I don't know. How, would anybody like to make a motion? Everybody, don't don't jump up at one time. But would somebody like to make a motion sure. in here? Mr. Evans. In the matter of concept site plan number 20-1320009, <clears throat> Wentworth Welding and Fabrication, having accepted the staff report and having made a finding that the objectives of section 60.6 .6 of the comprehensive zoning ordinance have not been met, and noting that the reference project has not met the requirements of concept approval, I move that the concept plan be denied. I have a motion, do I have a second? My second. My second. I've got a second by Ms. Summers. Okay. Um, any discussion on the motion? Okay, I'm going to go down the, the list and remember what I said. If you don't want to be first, you better see me before the hearing. What's he looking at me for? Okay. So, uh, with that being said, Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Van Kirk? No. Ms. Robrack? Yes. Ms. Summers? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Fazekas? Yes. And I'm voting yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weigel, you know the direction you you take your applicant in. Um, I know you're very good. You've worked with the Board of Appeals before. Uh, I'm sure you'll work well with them again. Um, there's not much more I'm going to say, but uh, I always say good luck with whatever venture. and. Um, Mr. Wentworth, please please try to work with your neighbors. Um, that's that that's how we roll. With that being said, I've been trying. I've been definitely trying. Thank thank you, sir. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all the board, the commission members. I appreciate the time and, and diligence on this one. Okay. Thank you, sir. Is there any other business this evening? Yep. One one quick thing for new business. When is it possible? with the coronavirus numbers moving in the good direction that we can have in-person meetings again. I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, who, who, who's going to eventually say we can or can't? Is it going to be the commissioners or? CDC. Probably the health department. Well, we've had them before at the Leonardtown High School yeah. back in as October. As long as you can accommodate the CDC rules. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, I would love to have had this hearing at the high school, you know, the, with everybody uh, there. Yeah, there was a window when we tried that at the high school too, as I believe. But the answer to your question is, the county follows the governor's orders. Okay. And the governor's order is for the maximum of ten. If the governor changes it, the county will change it in lockstep with the governor. But that's what it is. The county does. The county cannot independently decide, even though our numbers are looking good. If that were the case, if that is the case, I'm not sure can't decide on its own what it's going to do. It has to be approved by the governor first. What happened to the 39 number that somebody had said we could have in this room? Where did that go? That was before the limit was... Lowered to 10? Okay. Right. okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, just, so just had a... Because it's so much easier... It is if, easier. If, if people's here. Okay. It absolutely is, but, but we're following what the governor allows. Understand. Thank you very much, Mr. Hunt. I'd like to thank staff tonight. This 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 was a tough one. Attorney's office, everything. Um, it, it was tough, tough as I, tough as I've seen. That, and I, that's all. I'm, I could I could sit here and talk about it all night. I'm not yeah, going to say another word. Over Zoom is just you just 
almost can't do it. Yeah, it, 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 so it's and I don't think it's fair to the applicant. Uh, it just anyway. All right. Any, anything else? I accept a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. We re adjourn. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. <laughs> okay. You said that. Thank you. We're we're adjourned.